Hello, 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 friends. God bless you. This is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim here. We're so excited to have you here today. Listen, friends, there is a convergence taking place on the earth with God's prophets and his prophetic voices. This is a broadcast you don't want to miss. And friends, we have two incredible men of God, of course, one of your favorite prophets, Prophet Leon Dupria, and also Apostle Chuck Pierce. But before we bring them on, we need the atmosphere to be right. So I want you to begin to share this on your wall. Tag somebody, tag a friend. Comment below where you were watching from, because this is a global broadcast. This is going to be an international breakthrough broadcast where I believe God is going to release the word of the Lord into certain specific nations and also into this new year. Who's ready for 2023? Truly, this is going to be a year like no other. As the Lord said, it's going to be the year of resurrection. Three, of course, is the third day anointing. So it is going to be a year of resurrection power for the church. So therefore, there's a lot of shaking and a lot of breaking, but there's a new breed rising. So friends, I'm so excited to be back here with prophetic convergence uh, with these two incredible men of God. But I want you to begin to share. Give us some hearts and likes. Comment below. There is an urgency on this broadcast. There is a spirit of urgency because the man of God, the prophets have gathered. And there is a global word to release. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Amos that God does nothing on the earth unless he first reveals it to his prophets. So the Lord is speaking and the Lord is revealing. There's intel and insight, and there's impartation that will be released. Praise God. Well, this is Dr. Pastor Ben Lim, one of your favorite prophetic voices. And here I am. I'm actually in Vancouver, Canada. I'm in the great north. Praise God that it stopped raining. So you can see the sun behind me and this beautiful view. But there is great change in the atmosphere. And friends, let me tell you, we're still in this month of January, and even before we cross over to the new Hebrew month, which is a season of Purim, where the Esthers are going to arise, and Mordecai is going to gain double honor. I believe there is a preparation in the spirit, and God is about to launch many of us. Amen. So continue to get the numbers up, my friends. Let's build the atmosphere, build the room, build the algorithm. Hallelujah. Because in a few minutes, we're going to invite the man of God, Apostle Chuck Pierce. Praise God. Now, for the sake of time, I'm going to bring in my very good friend, who's also our co-host here, my good friend, Prophet Leon Dupria from South Africa. Let's give it up for the man of God. Come on, give us some hearts and likes as a man of God, Prophet Leon. Jumps on. How are you doing, Prophet? Good to see you, my friend. Good to see you, Dr. Ben. What an honor to be on. What a blessing to be on. Uh, it is a blessing. I want to ask everyone also right now, you know, I, I remember, Dr. Ben, I don't know if you, last time we went on, we, we hit over a thousand live viewers at the time uh, on Facebook, which is a miracle in its own because we know how Facebook, uh, how Facebook just just uh, squashes the numbers and I see it's, it's going. But I'm so excited to be with you, Dr. Ben, and, you know, to be in uh, the presence with Apostle Chuck Pierce. Uh, um, you know how we honor senior prophets and how rare senior prophets are, you know. Uh, and when I say senior, those who are in seniority in the experience, in the years, I'm so excited. My spirit is leaping. My heart is excited. And I'm ready to receive. I leave more than to minister. Come on. Come amen, on. Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I'm right there, I'm right with, there with you, Brother, Leon. Brother Leon. I mean, I, I mean, feel, I feel like, like, you know, you know I just want to sit at the sit. feet of Apostle Chuck and just receive the water that's being poured out and this is what we need in this generation i mean i mean we need a, a convergence of the generations and the streams and we need to come together and learn to receive from one another because these are the days where we're going to see the greatest move of god but that comes of course through unity and through the transference and the impartation i'm just reminded prophet leon it was just about one year ago where you and I first connected when I was in South Africa. And yes. wow, look at what God has done from that moment and from our relationship. 
I mean, look, I mean, we, we, we met with Kindred Spirits in the hotel, I remember. And uh, I think when you came, uh, you know, I've been in a period of, I don't know how to say it, but maybe call, I don't want to call it a secret place, but obfuscation, kind of like a, a period where God puts you into obscurity on purpose. And I kind of like withdrew on purpose uh, just to, um, you know, we've been focusing on our churches and so on. But uh, when you spoke about let us do the prophetic convergence, uh, you know, a threat that came to me last year, Dr. Ben, and I don't know if you can maybe identify to this. There was a threat that came against to silence the prophetic voices, uh, silence subtle threats in the atmosphere. And, and uh, you know, I made the mistake by sometimes submitting to it and uh, not really having a fellowship of other prophets or prophetic people. And it is so dangerous for a prophet to not have fellowship with other prophets because they are misunderstood, they are taken completely out of context. And, uh, you know, I felt kind of like in the trap and I, and, and, and it's like the Lord put me in this obfuscation. And when you said prophetic convergence, we began this thing, I think, towards the end of last year. And uh, the need for this, where we can have prophetic voices that can agree and stand in agreement, you know, and can lift one another up. And I think me and you were speaking about just young prophets, that's one representing each nation as we were reaching out to young prophets. And I believe, the Lord is going to bring an incredible move with a uh, young prophet, especially the next season that we're going in with the church. You know, I was prophesying that it's the year of Goshen. And uh, I mean, when we were prophesying COVID in 2019, uh, we were attacked and people said that that it's not going to happen. And then it hit three months after that, um, you know, but uh, prophets are those people whose voices are only needed at night, you know, like Nicodemus coming at the night time. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, especially when you're young. And I think that's why this convergence is so important. Guys, I want to ask everybody from our side, even right now on Facebook, on YouTube, wherever you are, share the, oh, sorry, you're not on YouTube, just Facebook, share this broadcast, uh, tag somebody, likes, like this broadcast, do something to get the algorithm up, share it on WhatsApp all over tonight. Listen, Revelation is going to drop tonight in a, ma it's going to be like manna from heaven to your spirit. It's going to be like dew from heaven coming upon your spirit. I don't want you to miss one word, especially South Africa. I know that the Lord is going to release a prophetic word for South Africa uh, from one of the uh, prophets that I respect for many years. I followed for many years and I want all our people to be on. I want you to begin to share this right now. Let us know in the comments if you're sharing. Let us know also where you're watching from and how many are watching with you. Amen and amen. amen. Absolutely, amen. Absolutely proper. Well, proper. well. Uh, in, uh, in a minute, in we're, minute gonna we're gonna invite, gonna invite the, the man of God, the, man the general God. Apostle Chuck Pierce, but I, I feel such an expectation right now because there's a rarity of the prophetic voice. And, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, there's a lot of conundrum, right? There's a lot of regurgitated words, but where is the true prophetic word, the revelation, the rhema, the kairos that brings alignment from heaven to earth. And of course I've released, uh, I've, I've already released 23 uh, prophetic points for this year. And a lot of them have been coming to pass, like the human trafficking rings being exposed and uh, even the floods and, and uh, of course, on the last day uh, of 2022, uh, the Pope just passed. And so there is a huge changing of the guards. And uh, this fellowship, this company that we're merging together, Prophet Leon, uh, I'm so excited to be a part of it. And uh, again, uh, we're going to be running together from glory to glory. Now, Amen. people of God, the power of God is strong here. I want you to begin to share because we need to break the algorithms and uh, we want your nation, your ministry, your representation to be connected to what's being released. Amen. So continue to comment below. Praise God. Now, friends, uh, let us welcome the general uh, God's apostle, prophet, apostle Chuck Pierce. God bless you, sir. Welcome, everybody. Let's welcome him on the stage. God bless you, sir. Happy New Year. Great being with you guys. I, I, I really feel like this is a divine uh, call and a divine moment for us. I believe it's starting something that has to go on this year. And uh, just to, uh, Leon, meet you and to see you and Ben to be with you is a real honor for me. Um, and I, th I think what I would like to do is share a few things for all of you out there over what I see the Lord doing this year. And then 
why we are having something like we're having with this convergence today, because it will become a pattern for the year ahead and, and a very important pattern for the year ahead. And then, of course, I would like to encourage uh, each one of you, especially in South Africa, I want to encourage each one of you, whatever nation you're in, I've been to Korea so far this year, I'm in Arizona tomorrow, but I want to encourage you that the nations are changing rapidly. They're in the valley of decision. Things are happening. And so we're going to have to go with the changes that we're seeing. But uh, Leon, I do want to give you a word for South Africa. I have a long history there with South Africa. And uh, with that, by the time I end or when I feel the spirit of God, I want to interrupt it, uh, let him interrupt with a word for you there in South Africa specifically. So Mm -hmm. all of you that are listening, we are in this divine historical time frame. It began at Rosh Hashanah 2019, and uh, it will go throughout this whole decade. We have to be very aware that in this decade, and in Hebrew, we're looking at the word pay, uh, which means breath is coming down. It means the voice must come forth. That's why, uh, Leon, it concerned me when you said how the voice was not uh, coming forth at the level it should be in South Africa. And so the voice of God must be coming forth. But we have to remember that God is breathing down from heaven and that's creating changes in the heavens. And if the heavens are changing, we know that the atmosphere of earth is going to reflect a lot of changes. But we also know that he is blowing down certain powers and principalities that have ruled us in the in the past. And that's causing us to have to come face to face with those powers and principalities so we can break through into this new place of glory that God has for us in the earth realm. And uh, so I've got one picture to show you if we can show it. I don't know if we can show it up there, but it's uh, this is a year. See, this whole uh, 10 year period that we're in is a war period. And uh, I know a lot of us don't like to think about war, but it's really uh, got a two dimensional aspect about it. It's war is linked with conflict. And uh, it's but it's also linked with our abiding place. And the greatest war is for us to get in our abiding place and for us to stay in our abiding place, both personally and corporately. And then I want to show you the war of how I see it generationally uh, and why a, a, a gathering like we're doing, a convergence like we're doing right now is so important. This year, the war is over divine recovery. And so that means that uh, with the war that we're in, we have to go back and look at older cycles that have happened in our life and where God began to move and the enemy interrupted those cycles and stopped that cycle of glory in our life from coming into fullness. And also in this year, Gamal, which is uh, linked with it actually in Hebrew, it's a camel. And uh, it so this year, the real war is over opening up new supply routes. Mm. Now, vision is linked with provision. And therefore, again, we're having to review our vision. We're having to look at certain things that died in the last season and they need to stay dead. We have to look at, uh, we don't need to call them forth again, but we have to look at things that the enemy stopped and tried to capture and hold captured And we have to say the gate's going to open up and that fullness of that provision that was linked with that is going to come forth. And then we have to find the new routes of provision. See, in this year 23, we always want to look at Psalms 23. And really, I, I believe that people don't look at that Psalm from a prophetic standpoint. They look at it from a pastoral standpoint. And actually, the Psalm is about a path of 
prosperity that Jehovah Rohi will show you. No matter what death you have to go through, no matter what lack you've been in, he will reveal to you what is necessary to break the lack. And then it talks about in that psalm, feast times. So we have to stay in God's timing of chag. Uh, Hog, and with that, uh, we, uh, Haggai becomes so important this year for us because it says that if we will stay in God's perfect timing, the feast times, and hit those feasts right on our path, our enemies will even have to serve us. And I believe by the end of 23, we're going to see enemies that have tried to rule us serving us in this year ahead. And that becomes very important. So don't get discouraged when you see the enemy coming against you because that's one of your divine assignments where you're going to keep walking in righteousness, right standing, as it says there in that word, and the enemy will have to serve you at the end. Now, that becomes very, very important as you look back on things that need to be looked back on. Now, something else that I believe is so important is this is a time of, uh, in this time of divine recovery, we have to know that old cycles are breaking. Loop breaks are happening. We are being reprogressed to prosper. And uh, uh, a cycle is supernaturally timed. Therefore, we're in such a supernatural realm right now that we must see things supernaturally. The Lord spoke to me at the beginning of the year and said something to me in all my 70 years that he's never said before. He said, this year you'll have to walk inch by inch where I've had seasons where I've walked step by step and I've walked day by day, but he said inch by inch because I don't want you to miss my interventions. And the enemy will be surprised if you will recognize my interventions as you walk forward, you will cause the enemy to back away and you will have access. Now, Ben, you mentioned something that we're entering into Shabbat the next, uh, the next month. Actually, that begins this weekend. That is the month of us gaining access for our favor ahead in the year ahead. And that becomes very important. How you start gaining the access and how you have been preparing yourself, God is going to favor you and give you access into a new place. Now, with that, uh, the thing I want to say is this, a new truth is rising up. Now, that's why a convergence like, ver convergence like this is so important, because God uh, puts three generations together to form his troop in time. And if those generations are not aligned together. Uh, the Word of God says this at the end of Isaiah 59. If those three generations are not aligned properly and speaking the Word of God together, we won't see the fullness of the glory in time. See, we're in time, God's not in time, and we have to choose to align. One of the things that the meaning of the year is about is a new troop arising. Now, that becomes very important in this season ahead because we are living in a season of Passover. Every year approaching Passover becomes very, very important for us. And we have to define our wars very carefully. We have to gain strategy. And we have to know that in the midst of this warring, we must move forward. This is a year that we must develop a new backbone. Now, I want to stop for a moment. I want to prophesy to you, Leon, there in South Africa, and all of you listening, Holy Spirit is very efficient. You can grab whatever portion of this word you want to grab. And the Lord says to you, I gave that nation of South Africa an understanding of kingdom.
I put that understanding upon that nation, but they keep moving out of my kingdom understanding and trying to establish a kingdom and be it, let it be ruled by a church. The Lord says, I'm bringing that back into order this year. I'm going to cause a people arise and a troop arise in that nation that will cause my kingdom be, to be sought after first. This will be a year of remobilizing my kingdom troop in South Africa. This will be a year of pulling together my government in a new way. And once my government is pulled together, I say the governments of that nation and the three capitals of that nation will begin to realign in a way that they have not realigned in the past. I say this will be the year of return of my glory mantle upon the kingdom of God in South Africa. And where they didn't understand the prophets of the kingdom, this year, they'll be crying out for the prophets to rise up and speak kingdom authority and kingdom uh, uh, dominion rule in back into this nation. I say I will cause the melting pot of that nation to come into a new form. I will cause the races to realign in my kingdom. I say I will bring my kingdom mantle back once again to South Africa and it must choose to wear that mantle this year or else it will be deviated from and postpone the blessings that I have. So I say, this is a year that South Africa will choose, saith the Lord. Now, Amen. with that, I also want to say, see, it's, it's a year of kingdom war. And because of that, we must understand that the kingdom is arising. Now, let me just share a few things before I have to go. And all of you listening out there with us, we must see the war that is ahead for the kingdom this year. I, I, I want us to just look at the big face-off of, for divine recovery. I want us to look at the types of war we're facing. First of all, there's going to be a war over communication. You're going to have to see in your sphere how are you aligned and how are you communicating. Therefore, just like this convergence we're having right now, warfare does not want to see this happen. We're going to have to see the war over the generations, and we're addressing that right now. And as I said earlier, we have to have three generations aligned with the best in our bloodlines uh, to overtake uh, and the DNA of God that's in these three generations aligning with wisdom, revelation, and authority so that we see an overcoming power come into our territories. And then there's this war over harvest. See, this is a year that we move in Passover into conquest. So by April, we're, having, we're developing a mentality of conquest for harvest. So we're having to look at our spheres. We're having to be like Joshua. We're having to say, okay, I've got to meditate on what God has said in the past so that I can move into the future. Then we have to understand Lord Sabaoth in our territories because he's the host of heaven and the host of the army of earth. And there is a divine convergence going on with those two hosts this year. And with that, you must, wherever you are out there, find your place in this divine convergence of the host. But just as uh, uh, Joshua had to have angelic visitation before he went in to conquest, we must have that convergence of 
visitation from angelic host so that we can war together. God's been showing me how angels are being assigned to nations and how angels are being uh, surrounding certain nations and how the government of God must interact with the government of uh, the kingdom that is there in the earth realm. And so it becomes really important that we understand this. And so Joshua, that Passover angel that met Joshua after 40 years, took them into the promised land. At Passover, we must be aware that angelic visitation will intensify. Now, again, I've already said there is a war over our trade systems and our provision linked with vision. And angels are being positioned in the trade routes. And that becomes very important for every nation to understand that. But this is what I want to end us with. And I'm going to flip the last one and then I'm going to end us with the boiling pot. The glory war ahead is one of our greatest wars. That means that we must abide in his glory and then we must walk in that abiding. See, hell hates the thought of the presence of God being released in every foot that we take. And so this war, this glory war is intense. And you've got to go back and look at how when glory intervened in a nation and how that glory never came into its fullness and then move forward to bring it into its fullness. Now, this is what I want to leave us with, with a convergence like today. Uh, God showed me in November him setting a pot on the stove, and the pot began, uh, he began to turn the fire under the pot. So, of course, I went, I've done a message on the boiling pot that you can go look on our website and review. But really, the principle that he took me to was in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, and where he took me to, he took me to the place where Elisha came back to Gilgal. See, there has to be a revisiting of the seasoned prophets that have gone before you with the prophets that God has put in territories for a time such as this. And that's what Elisha did. He went back to his schools of prophets that Elijah, that Elijah had taken him to. And when he got back to Gilgal, uh, all of a sudden he's with these younger prophets and uh, he, the prophets tell him they're hungry. And so they put this uh, pot on to boil and the prophets go out to find what is necessary for the stew ahead. Now, that's what I want to say to two young prophets like you. You're going to be gathering revelation for the stew these next three months. And uh, I, I want you to be careful how you gather uh, revelation like that. All of you listening, I want you to be careful as you're gathering and assimilating revelation. And one of the young prophets brought back and put gourds in the stew that were uh, poisonous. Well, I love the reaction Elisha had. See, I want to say a couple of things right now. God has put the pot on to boil. He's choosing the revelation for nations that's going into the pot. And with that, the pot is beginning to boil for our future. Some of what goes in the pot will be uh, strained out. And I love Elisha's reaction to how the younger prophets brought the gourd and put in that had poison. He didn't get shaken by the younger prophets. He was there to help them understand how to eat for the future. And I really believe convergences like that 
is modeling that for us. And all he did was ask the Lord for what would uh, uh, cause the, the poison to be neutralized in the pot so they could all eat together in the future. And I really believe this is very key as we move forward. The older prophets must be patient with what the younger prophets are gathering for revelation. Now, I'm going to say that to all of you listening from South Africa. Listen to me. There is great revelation in South Africa, and you young, you older, religiously inclined prophets need to understand, be careful how you judge what's being brought to the pot right now, because we have the pattern here for the year ahead. Elisha, if you want the double portion anointing, you're going to have to let the stew be made. And it's going to take both younger prophets and older prophets creating that stew together. And with that, we must be patient as that pot begins to cook. In days ahead, I see that the stew will start, will be made by April, and by July, we will be eating out of the pot. And so we must allow a reforming of this prophetic taste in our nations. That is so important for us. And with that, then, I say to us, let's let the new taste that God has be brought forth for us. Let him cook what we need to eat for the future in this first quarter. And then by the third quarter, let us be eating it. This is so key from nation to nation to nation as we move forward. And I decree over you too that you will not back down. You will keep converging until the stew can be tasted fully by all of those around us. And I loose that over you and I say, let this new troop arise. Let the kingdom advance and let's get Get this strength intermingled, interlined, and interacting together so the enemy that would try to stop the move of God's glory can be overcome by the truth that's being risen up at this time. I bless you too. I thank God for you, and I decree that anointing on you cannot be stifled, but will come forth in a whole new way as we go into the year ahead. Wow, wow, wow. Everybody, let's give it up for the man of God, Apostle General Chuck Pierce. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I want to turn the mic over to Prophet Leon before we excuse Apostle Chuck. Sir, I just want to say that was the most power-packed message I've heard in such a long time. Everything was so rich, so on point. Well, Glory I think God it's so Ben. I'm with two of the guys that God's using to make the pot of stew. And we've got to see that in our generations or else we're, we're going to be in trouble and we won't, we'll, we'll miss the glory for this season. I bless you too as you go forth. Wow, thank you so much, sir. Prophet Leon, do you have any last words for the man of God before we excuse and release him? Thank you. Thank you so much, Apostle Chuck. That is, you know, the anointing was all over me as you were as you were ministering and as you were releasing. I mean, the, your whole message was just not revelatory, but heavenly, um, directly from heaven. And I know people, I'm looking at the comments here on our side, and people were just agreeing the whole time for South Africa. And fire. I mean, the revelation you're saying about the pot just hit me so hot, you know, and uh, uh, that is crucial. This, that I believe God is going to change. We always say old wine skins, new wine skins, but, uh, you know, there has to be a convergence of 
the three generations for the glory of God to come because the Trinity, we see the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, we see the young and the old worshiping together. And you know, that has been a such an attack, uh, Apostle Chuck, on South Africa. The division in the churches is heartbreaking. And uh, you know, we are friends with, I mean, we are in uh, in, in relation association with your, your uh, mainstream type uh, network, if I can say it like that, I don't like to use that word, but uh, but there's just such division, and uh, you know I believe what God is going to do with the prophetic is so is so amazing, and we need we need prophets like you. Uh, I know all the people that's following me. We have churches in in Centurion, in Krugersdorp, in Cape Town, um, and obviously uh, groups all over South Africa. God has really given us a platform, especially in broadcasting, and then obviously with our branches. And our people are open for the prophetic, you know. But it took so many years to just to, God gave us the grace to break the ground open for it. But it is um, uh, South Africa, I believe, is going to get to a place where the soil is going to be ready I agree, for. I agree. Um, for the voice of God. You know, I heard just one verse uh, where I was releasing over the last two weeks. I released, and, and why, I just want to say this for two minutes. I know you need to go, Apostle Chuck, but you were speaking about the pot and revelation, and I've been preaching a type of message the last two, three weeks, which is very kind of like, a, I don't want to say controversial, but I touched on the art or the lost art, the art of the power of meditation, not Eastern meditation. I'm speaking of the secret so place, so Christ. And, uh, you know, and I and I was focusing on a verse with him where the Bible says that in Genesis 24, uh, 63, that Isaac went out into the field in the evening to meditate. And then it says this, that he lifted up his eyes. Now, we know that whenever with the scripture says lifting up the eyes, it's speaking of your spiritual eyes opening. And as he lifted up his eyes, he looked and he saw the camera were coming. And the Lord said to me, when my people learn to get their spirits right and focused upon me again in the secret place in the altar, in the place of meditation, you know, we have meditation and confession, but when we have meditation and contemplation as well, that I believe the church has lost just that place of stillness, that then camels and gemel will gonna come this year. They supply the provision. And, uh, uh, you know, we were preaching them this revelation. And as we're preaching this revelation, our churches were packed, uh, overflowing, and we were teaching prophetic revelation for three, four, hours and um and it was for me strange you know a lot of pastors would phone me pastors would phone me and say only do 28 minutes you're going to destroy your church we preach three hours and it is packed overflow to brimming and i realized the people that are hungry for prophetic revelation the stew that is beginning to to uh, the pot that is on you know and uh you need the older prophets to be patient with the younger prophets and i want to encourage any prophetic voice that is on right now we have a lot of prophets in south africa that is even in hiding that is listening to us right now this is such a timely word thank you so much well i so, so believe in you guys and i bless you as you go forth i started the year by teaching on meditation and uh, because joshua could not enter the promised land unless and succeed unless he meditated day and night on, Come on. on the password to get him into the future. And you're going to see every defeat he had came because he did not meditate. Now, I loose this over you guys. I am with you. You let me know. Uh, and I bless your nations. I bless your feet. And I decree every place you walk, you'll have a new authority. Bless you. Thank you, Apostle. Amen. Sir. Bless you, guys. God bless you, sir. Everybody, let's give it up for God's general apostle, Chuck Pierce. Wow, wow, wow. Let me tell you, Prophet Leon, that was one of the most delicious stews I've tasted, I've received recently. Thing is doing the same, you know, uh, and this thing just exploded. But anyway, sorry, I'm just, uh, you know, wow, wow. very blessed. I was very blessed by that. Yeah, 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 I'm, yeah, I'm blessed, I'm by, blessed that by that too. But wow, Prophet, there's so much that God wants to do. Friends of God, let's give it up. Give some hearts and likes right now. Myself and Prophet Leon, we're still going to continue for a little while longer. If you're blessed and if you're receiving, just just comment below, amen. But let me tell you, that was such a now word, Prophet. And I, I just want to share some things that the Lord was downloading to me while Apostle Chuck was ministering. Because who even knows when revelation or the prophetic is stirred up, it begins to stir something up within you. So you begin to get sparked with revelation and interpretation, and that's how iron sharpens iron. So I want you to stay on board because myself and Prophet Leon, we're gonna continue to minister and release the word of the Lord and prophesy over you. But Prophet Leon, 
when Apostle Chuck was talking about Purim and we're stepping into the Hebrew month of Shabbat, which is where Esther steps into the courts of the king. I believe many of you right now, you need to hear this. In the next month, during the time where Esther arose, there was a, uh, a extermination of every false word and every false decree. So I believe there's going to be two things that's going to happen in the next month. In this month of Shabbat, in the next month, hear me now, God is going to overturn false decrees, word curses, slander, accusation, allegation spoke against you. There's going to be victory in the courts of heaven because that's what we experience with Esther and Mordecai in the courts. So there's going to be an expungement and there's going to be a release and a clearance. I hear the Lord saying clearance in your life over every false decree and word that's been spoken over you. And then number two, the second thing, I believe in the courts of America and in the courts of the governments of the world, there is going to be indictments. There's going to be lawsuits. There's going to be charges. People are going to be sent to prison. There's going to be impeachments. There's going to be a court system. I hear the words, the court is now in session. There is going to be an opening of books and the courts are going to be in session where God is going to begin to judge in the courts of the earth, in the courts of the governments of the world, in America, in UK, in the United Kingdom, in different nations. I believe there's going to be a overturning and an overthrowing of false decrees, evil policies, evil governmental legislations, even in the next month. In Jesus' name, I release that. And that was something that was interpreted to me, prophet, and that sprung up on my spirit as Apostle Chuck was ministering. Now, as Apostle Chuck was ministering, there was so much that I received, and I want to share that in a few minutes. But Prophet Leon, how are you feeling, man of God? What's going on? I mean, this word today, what Apostle Chuck released, and even this broadcast that you and I are on, I mean, this is such a now word. This is so timely. So talk to us, man. Again, I love your American flag behind you. I didn't even see it. I think it's by chance. By South African, is one day. It's a little bit out of the view. You know, I don't like South Africa that much right now. Um, also, don't like America that much right now, but that's the you will know personally why. But, uh, 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 you know, I'm just joking. And the uh, prophet just, I, I, as a prophet, I just, I don't really, I offend. I don't really care. Uh, you know, the people on here that's following us should be fine with it uh, anyway. But you said something just now, Dr. Ben. You said uh, the opening of books. Uh, you know, I said last year when we did a prophetic convergence, the Lord gave me a vision going into 2023 that the year of 2023 is going to be a year of the opening of books and I saw him as a judge opening the books and calling people to an account you know this is definitely going to be a year of a lot of people are like this is going to be a year of repayment I understand that but it's a repayment in both good and evil and uh, what Apostle Chuck gave the word you know uh, a lot of people can say it's a glory word for South Africa but there was a warning word, word in there as well and he gave a warning to the church to say that the church is not pulling together and they keep losing out and that is so accurate he, look his word was very accurate for south africa and uh, uh you know this is i don't know even know what how much he knows about south africa but um that is very rare we actually need to take that and make a snippet out of it as well and put it on uh on on, on youtube or something like that that is really a powerful word um for uh for south africa but i saw also the opening of a book so i had visions of the opening of the book the lord said to me that this year is going to be tough you know when when uh i i I want to I want to share just one or two things that uh, I'm not really going to get into scriptural teaching uh, tonight. Um, I want people just to catch just the inspired word of God, you know, with myself and and, and Dr. Ben and Apostle Chuck and Apostle Chuck, like I said, he threw out such a um, huge uh, load. But but uh, there are things that the Lord shared with me and he said that there's a pandemic of heart attacks, a pandemic, a pandemic of anxiety that is coming upon people because of the increase of technology, the increase of certain signals, the increase of certain 
uh, technological developments. You know, 20 years ago, if I wanted to get hold of you, Dr. Ben, I phoned you at home maybe. And if you didn't answer, you didn't even know I phoned. You might have, I would have only seen you the next day. You know, now we are bombarded with everybody can get a hold of us. So you're going to see people, and we have seen this, people dropping dead with no cause of it because there is a pandemic of heart attacks and a pandemic of uh, of uh, of anxiety and a pandemic of panic attacks, fear, the spirit of suffocation coming upon people. The scripture says that the hearts of men will fail them as we are going towards end days. And I saw that a lot of people that are living in cities, that are living, they, their spirits is interrupted by what we call, and I don't want, I want to be very careful by using a certain word, but I know you would understand. I want to say uh, by the by the thought consciousness, you know, by um, when you're living in a city, there are so many signals going through us from radio to uh, to 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 what do you call it? Um, uh, 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 you know, uh, microwave. Uh, what do you call it? Radiation type of radiation broadcasting signals, but then you have another realm of signals. You have what we call the thought consciousness. You have so many thoughts. As a prophet, we pick up on the thoughts of the heart of men. You know what is amazing? A lot of people say, oh, nobody can read heads, nobody can read minds. I agree, nobody can read minds, but Jesus read the hearts. And 2018, it's now recently, they made a study that the heart actually has neurons in it, uh, neuro, they call it micro neurons in the heart, which means that the heart physically has the ability to think for itself. So you'll see whenever the Bible speaks about the thoughts or imaginations, it's speaking about the thoughts and the imaginations of the heart. So it's saying that the heart is thinking. And when Jesus, Jesus rebuked the Pharisees on the thoughts of their hearts, we see that the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So the heart has the ability to think. Prophets might not be able to read minds, but prophets can read hearts. Prophets have the ability to pick up the thoughts on the hearts. Now listen, you think with your mind, you imagine with your heart. So anxiety comes to the mind, but once it hits the heart, it becomes depression. So uh, I just went a little bit off track there. That is how, uh, you know, how prophets can pick up on the thoughts, on the intents of somebody's heart. They can sit around somebody, might not feel comfortable with the person, because and because the heart of that person is actually thinking. Now, you imagine, you yet, sir, with your heart. When you dream and you think theologically something, and then you shift over into getting into a daydream, do you know daydream is actually a vision? It's a vision that is from God. It is a realm that we call rayon. It's the ability to visualize and bring what God has told you into the natural, but it happens through the conduit, the organ of the heart. This heart is a spiritual organ as much as what it is a physical organ. And uh, being in a city location where there's so many thoughts going on, it's going to and it's gonna it's gonna make people struggle to connect with God and be able to. And that's why I'm been preaching meditation, and it is such a touchy subject because I'm not speaking of Eastern meditation. I'm not speaking of uh, of Buddhism or I'm not speaking of yoga of uh, transcendental meditation. But I'm speaking of an art of meditation that's been lost. When we preach on meditation, everybody knows about conf we can meditate on the word. You know, we we take the word, we we mutter it, we confess it in uh, under our breath. Uh, and we we kept on keep on saying it. We see the Jewish rabbis, we see the old patriarchs doing it. They would count the tassels on the prayer shawl and they would keep repeating the scriptures. And it's a form of meditation. But the body of Christ has lost the other part, the other side of meditation, which I call the art of contemplation. It's the prayer of contemplation. It's the ability to be so still and so quiet that the presence of God immediately begins to increase upon your life. Because you see, the Eastern side has taken and robbed that. Satan cannot create anything. Satan only takes and perverts. He copies and perverts. He duplicates and perverts. So meditation initially came from God. So then I came to the scripture where it says that Isaac went out into the field and meditated at night. It doesn't say meditated on the law. It doesn't say meditated in the word. It just says he meditated late in the evening. And then he lifted up his eyes. The moment he lifted up his eyes, it means whenever the scripture says the lifting up of eyes, it means the opening up of spiritual eyes. 
Okay, everywhere. When the Bible says that Abraham lifted his eyes and he saw God walking towards him with the two angels next to him, he opened up his spiritual eyes. When Abraham was on the Mount of Moriah where, where uh, he was offering up Isaac, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes and he saw a ram caught in a thicket. So whenever you lift up and you read in the scripture, it says lifting up of eyes, it means the opening up of spiritual eyes. So what happened? When Isaac meditated on the Lord, I want to say this, Christ is the centrality. The Holy Spirit is the focus. You you know, we keep our eyes. The Bible says meditate on heavenly things, on good things, have the mind of Christ. But when Isaac went out to meditate and keep his focus upon the Lord, but become still, you know, uh, just in a place where the frequency is right, where the sound is right, where the atmosphere is right. It is in the wilderness. The Bible says he went out in the field, not in the city. Jesus all the time went out into the field to pray. And when he did it, his spiritual eyes opened and then he saw camels coming and the lord said to me my people get into a place of seclusion of obfuscation of prayer obfuscation is the art of being taken into a place of obscurity for a season so that your eyes can be opened and that you can understand the rarity or appreciate certain qualities of life again so god would take prophets and prophetic people and especially the body of christ into a season of obfuscation pulling them aside like jesus went into the wilderness to pray and as he does that their spiritual eyes is going to be sorry it's going to be opened and there is going to be a uh, there is going to be a place where they will see the camels they'll see their provision so their provision is locked up in a place of stillness and god is calling the body of christ back to prayer because this pandemic you see the pandemic of anxiety the pandemic of heart attacks this pandemic that is coming of panic attacks it is all because of a lack of focusing upon the lord a lack of meditation we can get into the stillness and peace can come upon you and when that is not their fear the spirit of fear is released upon the body of Christ. Wow, wow, wow. wow. So rich, so, so rich, and prophet. so good, prophet. You know, uh, I, I don't know about you, but for, for us in our ministry, we've been doing 21 days of consecration starting off this year. And every year in January and in June, our ministry corporately, we go into consecration where we separate ourselves and set apart. And, and of course, to consecrate, it means to set yourself apart or to make holy again, to be sacred, uh, like you're, wedding, you're waiting for your wedding day, for your marriage, and which means that you're intentionally saying no to lesser lovers and other things. The Bible says Daniel decided he uh, made a decision in himself to not defile himself. So, you know, that's right on point, Prophet, because I believe right now God is bringing us into the wilderness so that we will train up our senses. We will begin to mature our discernment so that we will hear, we will see clearly for what God has. Because who here knows that your consecration is your preparation and also your meditation is your man manifestation. If you want to see the glory of God manifest, then we must meditate. We must continue to chew over like a camel or like a goat that begins to chew over the cud. God wants us to chew over, and that's what meditation means. We keep chewing over the cud in the mouth. We keep getting as much as we can. I don't know about you, but I'm gonna listen back to what Apostle Chuck shared earlier because it was so much, so rich, so full, and I need to meditate on it again, amen. So I'm right in agreement with you, Prophet, and I believe many of our watchers, viewers right now, you are going to prosper and you're going to accelerate because of intentional meditation, intentional consecration, and there's going to be great promotion. I want everybody to hear this, even as Apostle Chuck Pierce shared this. Apostle Chuck Pierce said from April to July. I want you to write that from April to July. My goodness, I feel the Lord from April to July. And we know that April is Passover. July there, in, in my knowledge, there's no major appointed time or Hebrew feast in the month of July. But from April to July, there's going to be a stirring. And I believe God's preparing us up to Passover, to Pentecost, to Rosh Hashanah. So get ready because this is going to be the best year of your lives, the greatest year of your lives. Um, Prophet. Uh, as Apostle Chuck was sharing, um, and I, I feel like, you know, probably in a few minutes we should pray for the people because 
I yes. feel like honestly, Apostle. What a positive so he gave, he gave right everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Exactly. We, we, we don't want to come with a, with another word of the Lord uh, because uh, you know what he what he said was wait. And um, this is the first time I'm in an interview with him or I'm on a broadcast with him. Uh, I obviously know him and South Africa knows him very well. You know, uh, I know that he's been here quite a few times and uh, well, many times. And uh, uh, he's very respected, very honored in this nation. But um, he, what he said was so weighty and there's so much substance in it. Um, you know, that thing with the pot really just really just opened and exploded for me. And he brought it over with such an amount of grace, you know. Uh, not condemnation, let's destroy the young prophet that put in wrong revelation. No, 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 let's cover the young prophet that put in wrong revelation. You know, he, he speaks from a father's heart. And uh, I think that is what's lacking. You have the side in the body of Christ that are, that are, that are um, old wines. You know, say old wines, let me say uh, pioneers, generals, and uh, they... Um, they are wanting to destroy the young, and there's others that want to father the young, you know, and uh, God's glory is seen on those who are father. And I always say this, that Elijah and Elisha, when you see Elijah, Elijah was a good father. Elisha wasn't such a good father. Elisha destroyed Gehazi for his first mistake, and the mantle never passed on. You know, we see that mantle only picked up by John the Baptist uh, in, in, in the New Testament. So uh, John the Baptist picking up, because when they looked at John the Baptist, they said the spirit of Elijah, rest, the spirit and power of Elijah is resting upon on you. So Elisha took the mantle to the grave. Why? Because when they even went to his grave, they got resurrected. So the mantle was taken to the grave where Elijah passed on the mantle. Elisha wasn't really a good father because he rebuked even the little children that try to, that try to, so you see there was a, a bit of a problem with anger there when it comes to Elisha, but you have bodies and fathers in the body of Christ, one that offers with grace, that has the ability to, to give time for things to be developed, for people to develop, for people to make mistakes and grow in that. And I thought he brought that message with such revelation or grace through, you know, that I think is necessary. And like I said, we're going to we're gonna be praying for all of you. I want you guys to receive impartation. We have a good amount of people on. Let us know if you were blessed by what Apostle Chuck was saying. Wow. And I know I was blessed. Let me tell you, Prophet, me and Apostle Chuck, we did a broadcast a few months ago, and that was wonderful. But today's was super special. There was an extreme grace that was poured out today and i know it's because of the presence of all of us three coming together amen um but prophet before we begin to pray for the people yes i, I need to release this because when apostle chuck was ministering what was interpreted in my spirit were these words i got eight things as apostle chuck was ministering and eight things number one there's going to be new wins all right, there's going to be new winds of change. There's going to be new movement. So look out for the new winds. There's going to be great rapid movement. Okay, number two, there's going to be great acceleration. So as Apostle Chuck was ministering, I felt in my spirit great acceleration where this year is going to go by very fast. Things are going to begin to happen at lightning speed. Number three. The third thing that the Lord showed me uh, was that there's going to be a great shaking in the heavenly realms, a great shaking. So there's going to be signs in the skies. Okay, so get ready for signs in the skies. The fourth thing the Lord showed me and spoke to me as Apostle Chuck was ministering was power breaks and power outages. Now, friends, you know, I've been prophesying about this. I know many of you have commented that it's already happening in South Africa, but I saw cities, power breaks, city outages. Number five, I saw unusual weather patterns, unusual weather patterns that's gonna happen this year. Number six, I saw new angels, new regional angels being released. As Apostle Chuck was ministering, I saw new angels that have never been released on the earth, the Lord's releasing those angelic hosts. Number seven, great shaking and earthquaking. Shaking and earthquake. I believe there's going to be great earthquakes and great shaking. Literally, uh, with weather and also with the economy and with the body of Christ. And number eight, the eighth thing that the Lord showed me was a release of mantles. This year, 
there's going to be a great release of mantles. So I want you to catch it. And I decree and I declare this, that in this year, these eight things are going to take place and happen in Jesus' name. If you receive it, say amen. Now, friends, you already know I released 23 prophetic points and insights for this year. A lot of it, a number of those things are already coming to pass. And you can watch that on our Facebook or YouTube. But Prophet Leon, any last thoughts and words? Listen, I'm excited because you and I, we're going to be doing more of these prophetic convergences. We're going to be bringing more prophetic voices. Friends, did you enjoy today's prophetic convergence? Uh, do you enjoy whenever myself and Prophet Leon come together? Amen. I honor you, Prophet. Love you greatly. You're a great friend. Honor the grace, the mantle on your life. And truly, this is the beginning. Prophet. Amen. Amen. No, I think, you know, we, we have released so many things the end of last year, myself and you, together at the beginning of this year with people. And then obviously Apostle Chuck, what you were saying with those things is so accurate. You know, I had a... Um, I had a very vivid vision, and um, I can't remember if I shared it with you on uh, uh, on 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 on. Uh, on I can't remember if I did it on live stream or not. I did it. I did it at church, and and the Lord showed me a whole vision of when it comes to Brazil, things happening there. We saw the soccer player Pele's death, and how we prophesied that. You know, I said in the in the vision, I said they they will come and they will say the king is dead, the king is gone, and this is relating to Brasilia, uh, Br Brazil. And, uh, you know, and then it was two weeks after that uh, newspaper, front page newspaper said the king is dead. And it, and Pele, the soccer player, was called and termed as the king. Not only that, the Lord said, what I didn't tell the people is that the Lord said to me that that is just a precursor of something that is going to strike Brazil uh, when it comes to political or governmental uh, uh, in the region, because he was somebody that was very loved by Brazil, loved by the whole nation. He was an he was an icon. He was a national icon. Um, uh, but it was only because a lot of people ask me, why does God? Why does God predict? A soccer player that's got nothing to do with the kingdom. No, no, no. There's a precursor to things that is going to happen. And there's a sign of something that is going to hit politically. And people need to pray for the nation of Brazil. You know, uh, when it comes to South Africa, uh, people need to, you know, it, it is so difficult with South Africa. Let me be honest. I, I don't want to say this online. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, Apostle Chuck also mentioned it a little bit. Do you know it's very difficult for prophets to see what's going to happen in South Africa? Because of how the prophetic anointing is not celebrated. So God mm. doesn't, God restrains our eyes from actually seeing very specifics of what is happening because the nation is not embracing the prophetic voice. And that is a very sad thing when prophets can no longer see what is happening with the nation. It's very, I mean, everybody can say, okay, what is happening? We prophesied actually end of last year, a New Year's Eve, New Year's Eve, we prophesied and said riots will break out, uh, revolutions is going to break out this. And, 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 and I just want to look for it because I spoke about a blackout event or a shutdown event. I made it very clear on New Year's Eve. Let's go. And now they're calling for the whole nation, national shutdown in South Africa because of the electricity. So South Africa, you must understand without electricity, it's not just a home that doesn't have electricity. These are mines, people that can't come up with, they can't work and mines, hospitals, people dying, uh, farmers can't make food, so the famine is coming. The farmers are trying to get all of the president, and the president is literally just stealing money and running away. It's a very corrupt country, and uh, it is, uh, it is, um, uh, 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 what else is there? there there's, when it comes to hairdressers, can't, businesses can't run, small business can say they run a generator, but what does it come to those who are bakeries, who are doing food? They can't, they literally, don't, you know, we have power sometimes two hours a day. And uh, your batteries, your inverters can't charge. It is, and because of that, the people are getting very upset in their hearts. And uh, the only, I made a live stream the other day. I don't care if they're going to come off to me or say anything, but I said we need to go to the streets. I didn't say with violence, but I said with anger, and the people need to do it. The people, you know, with with a, you know, because a lot of times there's these protests in South Africa that's so peaceful and it doesn't affect anything because the government is so corrupt. They need a people to rise up, a revolution to rise up. They need the people to stand on. We prophesied that, and immediately already it is happening right now in South Africa. So we're calling. Everybody's calling all over for a national shutdown of the nation so that we can get electricity back. We don't have electricity. I mean, what night? What worth is it to live in a nice house? And you don't have electricity, you know. Um, 
So it is uh, it is a very shameful thing. A lot of people are just ducking. And there's also a spirit of lethargy of um, in South Africa where people are just don't have the will to do something anymore, to stand up and do something anymore. They're kind of like just rolling over and dying. And Apostle Chuck also rebuked that thing in his prophecy in a very dark speech, in a very subtle way, saying, hey, it's time to rise up. It's time to stand up, make a decision and embrace the governments of the church so that the governments of the kingdom will be established. And, uh, you know, so uh, uh, that was that was um, that was amazing. And uh, but in South Africa, these things are happening. That it, then there's seasons, there's, there's, there's cycles, there's epochs that is happening in the body of Christ that is shifting. We saw it with King Charles. We saw it with Queen Elizabeth. We saw it um, that is happening right in the United States with political on the side of political, the things that are get exposed with um, on that side, you know, where they found the documents. And that is a big thing that is happening right now. But these are cycles and groaning pains that the earth is going through. South Africa is in a very dark spot. People need to pray for South Africa. The church needs to rise up because in the midst of all of this, the church is fighting. The church is not in unity. You know, I am as a minister, I'm here as a minister and I am connected with great ministers, but I can tell you now, there's not unity. Um, you know, there is no friends in ministry. There is none. You know, um, I have one, one or two friends on this side and we know it. There's no friends. Even we're not connecting the way we should. There's a spirit that is coming in. So people need to pray for South Africa. The church need to rise up, but a revolution needs to go to the streets. I don't care who says what. I believe everyone in South Africa will agree with me on this thing, but that is where we're going to see fires break out. We're going to see riots coming up. Um, people are going to see it as a negative thing, but it's not. God is in behind it, but the nations are going through growing pains. Another thing that Apostle Chuck said is something about the nations. You know, he just kept saying it. There's something about the nations, and he said we must do something about the nations, you know, when it comes to broadcast. But there's something that is brewing when God is, when all the nations is going to begin to go through certain things, whether it's war. Listen, war is on the horizon. Famine is on the horizon. We have newspaper articles all over the nation that are saying there's no more food. It is just not put into mainstream because they're trying to make it keep silent. But that is what is happening. So I believe that uh, that even if this broadcast Broadcast can just be an encouragement to young prophets, prophetic voices. I saw people really tagging prophets, you know, in, in this broadcast in South Africa, that they can come alive. I know many of them. I know all of them almost. And they are too much in hiding, you know. Well, prophet, thanks for sharing your heart. We feel we, we feel the burden you have, of course. And, uh, you know, I, I feel the burden of the Lord for my country, for America, and uh, even for Korea. And... Uh, one of the things that I love about the United States, which a lot of other people do not like, or a lot of different nations celebrate and honor, is that in the United States, we fight back. We fight back. And what happened during COVID-19, the Corona Bologna, with the globalist lockdown shutdown, I, I went on broadcast and I said, Acts 19 for COVID-19. And what is Acts 19? There were riots and revivals go hand in hand. So I believe that there's going to be the greatest move in South Africa, in Brazil, in the United States, everywhere, even in midst of these spiritual principalities that are trying to hold on. Friends, God is judging the heavenly realms. And watch what God's going to do from Cape Town to Cairo. Do you know why, friends? Because I believe in the next decade, hear me now. And this is why probably on this year, I'm focusing a lot more on Asia this year. I'm going to Asia about four times this year. But I believe in the next 10 years, the eyes of the world are going to shift from the Western nations to Africa and Asia in the next 10 years. There's going to be a radical shift of power. We see China right now. China is nearly the world power right now. That's why America and China is battling yeah. in the spirit, yes. But yeah. we're going to see in the next 10 years the focus and the shift of Africa and Asia. So this is why this prophetic convergence is so important. Because my heart, Prophet Leon's heart, is to unite and raise up the next generation, the new breed of prophetic voices. Amen. Prophet Leon, anything else you want to say before we no. just begin to pray and prophesy? Because... My goodness, I, I feel the stirring of God. I believe the spirit of intercession is going to come upon the people. I feel the weight of God, the fear of the Lord, and I feel the spirit of intercession 
that's going to pierce all the witchcraft, the warfare, and darkness, and we're going to see an overturning. Anything you want to say real quick, Prophet Leon? And uh, no, I'm I'm really good, but I just, you know, the people are being called to prayer, and I believe that people really need to retreat into their prayer closets and intercession. So, because there's a season of provision that is coming. Like I said, this whole broadcast was so prophetic, you know, and if our people are mature, uh, personal prophecy is powerful, but when Apostle Chalk spoke, you can take that word to the bank, especially if you're in South Africa. He also spoke globally for the body of Christ, but for South Africa, really, you can take that word to the bank. My spirit was so much agreeing. You know, that is a prophecy. That is a prophecy for you individually. That is a prophecy for you personally. It just ignited with my spirit and, um, you know, people are being called back into prayer. I put a post up on Facebook saying that God is calling the body of Christ back to prayer and it went viral. It's almost over 10,000 likes. You know, I just said that God is calling the body of Christ back to prayer and it, it really it really went viral all over 10,000 likes. I think it's got something close to a thousand shares or more. I'm not exactly sure, but um, but God is calling the body of Christ to prayer because when Apostle Chuck said war, it's a spiritual war. You know, uh, we're seeing the repercussions of it in the natural, but there's a great spiritual war that is, remember, things first happen in the spirit, then it happens in the natural. So when we see something happen in the natural, it's usually a repercussion, A it's usually a reverberation of what happens in the spirit. So uh, there is a greater war that is happening in the spirit. That is why many feel tired, many feel worn down. You know, the Bible says that the that um, uh, uh, in, in Daniel, maybe you, could, you can just help me remind mind on the scripture but it says that he wants out the saints yes by what with by the horn of accusation with a horn of accusation he wears them out by many words by weighty words you know and words thoughts accusations is what wears out the saints it makes them tired and not being able to battle uh being worthy to battle and i believe that is a word get into a place of prayer to get your spiritual life strong so that you're not worn out well, prophet, let's pray right now. Let's come in agreement. All the witchcraft, the warfare, the lying tongues, lying spirits, spirit of accusation and allegation is being broken right now. I know many people, you've been going through car accidents, people's bodies, you've been getting sick, flu-like symptoms, the spirit of infirmity. We bind it and we break it now. Some of you, you've been experiencing financial poverty. You've been experiencing a low and a closing of doors we declare and we decree that this year the gemel anointing the comeback anointing the financial realm of prosperity of camels a caravan of camels is coming to you you shall not lack what about the bible says that though the lions grow hungry god's children shall not be hungry so we declare the overflow get ready for the open heavens i see floods in the spirit i've been prophesying about the floods but this stands for the outpouring and the provision and the replenishment of heaven your vats will be full i declare and i feel such a strong grace prophet for entrepreneurs this year there's going to be a grace for the apostolic ox and for entrepreneurs listen if you have a business if you are a ceo if you are a leader of a business or businesses or a leader of a church ministry, we release the blessing of God that you would increase a thousand fold, that the spirit of the Lord will cause you to multiply. So thank you, Father, that these people will be conduits. They will be givers, not takers, lenders, not borrowers. It will be the head and not the tail. Thank you, Father, that they... I see the Lord raising you up as a head in your region and in your nation. For God says that the nations will come to the hill of the Lord. They will run to the mountain of God. So thank you for the fire of the Lord. Go ahead, prophet. Go on. Amen. And uh, I'm going to just go on that prayer with Dr. Ben that I pray right now. That every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of accusation of slander be broken upon your life, but that people and everyone listening under the sound of our voice right now, 
that they will grab the opportunity that is presented in the realm of the spirit this year for them. Even though there's darkness, the Lord is saying to me, the, the glory of the Lord shall arise when great darkness covers the earth. When great darkness seems to cover, the glory of the Lord is hidden in there. The other thing that the Lord said to me is that the glory of God conceals a matter, but it's the glory of kings to search out a matter. There's something hidden for you in this year that as you seek it out, it's going to take you in the secret place. It's going to take you into meditation. It's going to take you, when I say meditation, you know what I mean? The art of contemplating, the art of confessing, meditating upon the Lord, upon His medit precepts and the law. Uh, but when you seek the Lord, when you seek His face, when you put your full focus on Him, because the enemy has tried to distract many by bringing, listen, the enemy doesn't distract you by just discouraging you, but he distracts you by bringing another goal, another focus, and then you put all your energy onto another focus, and it is not the Lord. And the Lord is saying to me that it's going to shift your focus. He's going to bring an alignment with your spirit because even this year, I've termed it the year of Goshen, but the Lord also said to me, it's the year of the spiritual man. It's the year where I'm going to raise up people to become a spiritual man. The spiritual man judges all things. Uh, uh, the natural man uh, cannot discern the things of the spirit, but the spiritual man judges all things, but is not judged by anyone, discerns all things, but is not judged by anyone. That is going to cause people to become a spiritual man, to receive spiritual things, to receive spiritual importations. Your spirit is going to receive importations, but listen, I want to say this and I'm going to kind of like leave it as this again. I know I'm supposed to be praying, but I'm kind of like releasing a word, but that is okay. But Apostle Chuck said that new revelations is being stirred in a pot. And I was too afraid to prophesy this really, but there's a new revelation that is going to be birthed into the body of Christ. Some are going to call it heretic. Some are going to call it new age. Some are going to call it uh, uh, doctrinally incorrect, but there's new revelations that is coming into the body of Christ that God is using young prophets for that is going to begin to stir it. Some might make mistakes. Some might not, but we have to embrace it to come forth. Revelation will never violate scripture. It fully supports scripture. It just violates our perception of scripture. So I see this. That is why the new wineskins are being attacked like never before, because they're bringing a certain type of revelation in that is not understood. And where pioneers will always bring, will be hated. Pioneers will be called heretics. But I see the Lord bringing in certain new revelations. And Apostle Chuck touched on that. And I suppose I'm supposed to be praying, but I just, you know, felt inspired to to release that prophecy again, uh, Prophet Ben, uh, and, and there are people, and this is prophecy, guys, so you can receive this, get under this prophetic unction, get under this prophetic atmosphere. Listen, you go into a new year with a prophetic anointing. I want to make this very clear. When a cross overtakes place, it is a prophetic anointing. When people were taken into Goshen, it was Joseph, the prophetic anointing. Dr. Ben, what is very powerful is that when we look at the, the Goshen, when Joseph told his brothers to go tell his father to come to Joe, Joe, Goshen, this father went to the Lord to ask if you really should do this. And the Bible says something so powerfully. It's the first time that scripture jumped out of me. The Lord said to him, go pack your stuff and go. But, and I'm just obviously uh, uh, just paraphrasing, but he says this, he says, Joseph will lay his hands on you and touch your eyes. So he says, your son will lay his hands on you and touch your eyes. But never again, we see it often. We see his father getting to Joseph. Joseph sent him to Goshen. And the Lord said to me this, you cannot enter into Goshen unless the prophetic anointing touches your eyes mm. and changes your spiritual sight. Come on, you will come not on. be able to see it because Goshen is hidden from the world. It's hidden from Egypt because the hail hit Egypt on every side, but it did not touch Goshen. But your wow, eyes need to wow. be touched by the prophetic that is why it's so good. You know, we call Apostle Chuck an apostle, but we know he's a prophet. Yeah, yeah, you understand what I'm saying? We know uh, he's in the office of a prophet. He's a senior prophet. He's just moving into the office of, I mean, he's moved into the office. He's an apostle as well. And we call him Apostle Chuck, but we know the primary anointing there is a prophet. So it is so crucial to go into a new year with a prophetic word, prophetic anointing. My goodness. My goodness. I, I love so, it. I don't know. You need to catch the prophetic revelation to have a glory habitation you need to see before you be you need to be able to perceive before you receive now friends so much was said and done this is so rich prophet leon i love it whenever we come together and my goodness i uh, i mean listen friends the different ministers prophetic voice that we begin to bring on in the next few months it is going to be so crucial I believe that this may be, probably, and I, I don't say this lightly, but I believe this prophetic convergence may be 
one of the most important prophetic broadcasts out there. And I don't say that lightly because this is strictly prophetic intel, rhema, revelation, yes. and there's a weight, substance, authority when we do these prophetic convergences. Amen. But friends, Amen. as we're transitioning, I, I want to open up a time for you to sow a seed because who here knows we need to honor the prophets. We need to honor the man of God. Don't dine and dash, friends. You Let's honor the general, God's general, Apostle Chuck Pierce. I mean, what he released, I am going to be feeding on for a few weeks. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be sowing. I'm going to be sowing as well tonight, you know, because this is a guest we got on that I want to honor. And I feel that uh, I'm going to be doing that, you know, directly after this broadcast. Absolutely, bro. And Apostle Chuck really was intentional in releasing a word for you and South Africa. Come on, yes. our South African friends, are you grateful that the word of the Lord was released through such a senior global prophet, Apostolic Voice, amen, and that the Lord poured out to our dear friend, man of God, Prophet Leon. But friends, I want you to begin to sow, and as you sow, I want you to sow a seed of honor, amen. I want you to sow a seed of honor, but as you sow, I want you to comment, Goshen glory, Goshen glory. All right, because this truly is a season where the glory, the habitation of God is our Goshen zone. Okay, and I want you to comment Goshen glory. So uh, we're pinning the links for you to give. It's also up there on the screen, but we want you to sow. And as you sow, we want you to comment Goshen glory. Please do not dine and dash, but honor what the Lord has done. Honor the graces, the mantles. Do you know how rare it is to have, you know, three prophets together like this today, even at the beginning of this year? Come on. It's still the beginning of the year. Come on, people of God. So, so bless the Lord, honor the prophets, honor the mantles, the graces in this room. Praise God. And I see people are saying they sowed. I see people yes. are saying they sowed. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for those who say they're sowing to the anointing. Let it be a seed of honor, you know? I'm going to say something controversial because ahead, we have bro. a prophetic crowd. You cannot touch, tap into a prophecy. Mm. Uh, you know, these are things that we're scared to preach, but you cannot tap into a prophecy without giving. The Bible says, he who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. What is a prophet's reward? Prophecy. So, you know, the prophet's reward we receive from Apostle Chuck today is the prophecy. And for us to tap into it, it takes a seed of honor. I teach my people that all the time. It's got no, that's why prophets are so persecuted because prophecy sometimes doesn't flow out of them because they are not being honored and God doesn't allow it to flow out because the people don't understand honor. You know, we understand, we know the people on here understand the, the seed of honor. And, uh, but I want you to connect it to the prophetic. The way it is embraced is through a seed. God looks at our heart by giving because, you know, the Bible says where our treasures, that's where our heart is. So God wants to see where is our heart and he looks at our finances. Uh, the way I get my heart back to him is to get in my finances, but a seed of honor and people typing in Goshen glory all over. And thank you so much for your seed and you will receive a prophet reward. Uh, Apostle Chuck Pierce is a prophet. This is not a if or a but. He is a prophet. Uh, you will receive a prophet's reward and a blessing. Uh, he prophesied over this nation. Do you know how few prophets we have coming to South Africa? And I'm just speaking to those guys in South Africa right now. We have few. There's not a lot of prophets. What, what major prophets, what senior prophets are coming to South Africa from the outside? It just doesn't happen. I'm very sorry. I just don't see it. If they come, they are hidden in a, some small little church. I'm not saying small is a bad church, just some church somewhere where we don't see them. They are not put on a platform. Uh, and I think that is something that is very wrong that I believe, again, it is also, you know, when God moves uh, prophets, it's because of judgment and we need to pray for this nation. But that is why we need to honor the prophets. And those who have given a seed of honor, we want to bless you. We want to thank you. I see people still typing all over. And uh, obviously just for them to let this, for, to let them know, uh, uh, Dr. Ben, that this seed is going to, to, um, to Apostle Chuck, that you're going to honor, we're going to honor him also out of this. Absolutely. You know, sowing to him. <laughs> And you know, you know what? The last time we had a broadcast with Apostle Chuck, we sent Apostle Chuck a seed, and he was shocked. He did not expect to receive a seed, let me tell you. So people of God, we want to honor the fathers. And what you said, Prophet, is so true. Honestly, in my opinion, 
Oh, Shabbat. There's probably about three. I know there's more, but there's probably three major senior or maybe about four major senior prophets that have really pioneered the prophetic move from the 80s and 90s and are still around today. And that is Bill Hammond, Chuck Pierce, James Gall, and Cindy Jacobs. You know, those four are probably the most internationally feared, known, global prophetic voices that have pioneered the prophetic that are still around. So friends, tap into this, so into this. Let's honor the man of God because this is such a now word. Continue to type in Goshen Glory. Thank you, Avis. Thank you, Emmy. Thank you, uh, Lori, prophetess. God bless you. Uh, Melissa, what is the amount you sow when it's a seat of honor? Uh, higher than what you would give to anybody else because you want to honor uh, the men of God. In fact, the Bible says you give double honor to the ministers of the gospel. So uh, be led by the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sherry. Thank you. I see people sowing. Kimberly Murphy, God bless you. Vicky, Providence Ivana, Vic Strike, Crystal, Monica, Lord be Sue Sanchez, Darley, Prophet Leon. I don't know if you see any names you want to come in agreement with. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, mine is different. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so, um, so I keep. I'm, I'm looking for the names that you're mentioning, and I realize mine is different. Yeah. There are so many on my side, guys. I think I got over, over, fifty names here. Uh, uh, you, Murray, thank you. Joyce, thank you. Elizabeth, thank you. Lynn, thank you. Roxanne, thank you. Uh, Lisa, thank you. Vanessa, thank you. Candace, thank you. Irene, thank you. Uh, Johan, thank you. Oh, uh, you, Murray, thank you. Beatrice, thank you. Kathy, thank you. Lisa, um, please, can you please post the sewing link in the comment section? I believe they have. Um, it's also on the screen there, guys. So it's, it's on the screen. Uh, it's right there. I think it is www.benlimglobal, hey? It's uh, the Linktree slash Benlim Ministries. Oh, the Linktree one. Sorry, it's a bit blurred on my site. Okay, but it is there, right there on the screen, guys. So just turn your phone and you'll see it there. Um, uh, amen, Goshen Glory. And thank you, Goshen Glory, Goshen Glory. Uh, Roxanne, Roxanne, thank you so much. Brandy, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, guys. Um, uh, uh, Brandy, thank you so much. Uh, Dawn, thank you so much. Victoria, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. I've mentioned so many names on your glory. Thank wow, you. Wow. Pri Priyani, Kunko, Mushin, thank you. Leticia Bosch, Christine De Yager, Dr. Angela, thank you, Lord. Cynthia Alvarado, Jürgen Meyer. Thank you, Lord. Bekama, Tejutua, Pastor Sharon. Wow. Awesome, thank Lynette. You. Thank you so much. Uh, some people say they even sold also directly to, to Chuck Pierce. That's also great. That's also a great blessing. And, and we'll let him know. We'll let him know. Uh, Lynette, thank you so much. Um, uh, Beryl, thank you so much. Um, Charlene, thank you so much. And guys, like I said, these things were short, powerful, but there was, you know, when Apostle Chuck spoke, there was, it was a direct link to heaven for me. I can discern whether something is prophetic revelation immediately or not. And it was like just the anointing, electricity. It's so nice to see somebody so senior and full of light in their eyes, you know, um, as a prophet. And uh, South Africa needs it. Betty, thank you so much. Heron, thank you so much. Moses, thank you so much. Marsha, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. I know the Lord's going to bless you. We're we'll praying for a prophet's reward as well. We're going to pray for 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 everybody that has given right now. Uh, uh, before we before we go off, absolutely. Well, why don't we pray, uh, prophet? Because the the word that the Lord gave you for this year was Goshen. I know I talked about Goshen when uh, the pandemic started in 2020, but truly this year there's going to be a great grace for the transference of financial wealth. So yes. we want to we want to bless you that God will cover you and increase you like never before. Um, amen. So uh, amen. before we close, prophet, uh, why don't we just decree that over them and then uh, we'll bring it to a close, man. I got go ahead. 
Amen. I, I want everybody just to raise your hands, touch your phone, uh, you know, touch your TV screens, wherever you're watching right now. I want you to have some contact point as we pray. I want you to know this, you know, never, even as you are followers of this ministry and ministries of Dr. Ben, of myself, uh, and prophetic convergence, know, have this heart in you that you want prophets and you want men of God blessed. You know, when we have that heart in us, you will see how God will bless you. And a lot of times people are so worried to think, okay, but that one might have too much. No, 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 no. You know, this is somebody who carries the voice of the Lord. We look at Apostle Chuck, uh, when we look at other ministers, other prophets and so on. Uh, and the Lord, in, you know, prophets are God's economical economy system. When a prophet's rewards come to them, God blesses the people through the key of prosperity. Prophets carry the key of prosperity. So the moment where they receive a seed, or a seat of honor. And I'm not somebody that really preaches on that because it can sound very biased. I'm just mentioning it to a prophetic crowd right now. They have then the ability, the anointing to release the key of prosperity back to the people. And we see this beautiful uh, ecosystem in the kingdom of God where the body of Christ is being blessed and the prophets and the ministers are being blessed. But once those things are being hindered, there comes a distraction and misalignment in the body of Christ. So stretch out your hands wherever you're right now. I'm going to pray, Father, that in the name of Jesus Christ, let there be a prophet's reward upon their lives right now. Let the anointing rest upon them. Let this be a year of Goshen, a temporary place of protection, a temporary place of blessing, a temporary place of luxury, of plenty, a place where we draw near to God, a place where the hail does not strike, a place where the fire and the drought does not come near, a place where people can live in comfort and a place of promotion, that those who were in Goshen were promoted by Pharaoh without even looking at what their abilities is. He was only telling Joseph, promote this one, promote that one. I pray for the spirit of promotion, the anointing of promotion. I pray for the for the anointing of Goshen to rest upon their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Those who sow the seed, may you touch them through this broadcast. May, may, may the airways not be limitation. May there be no distance in the realm of the spirit. We release a prophet's reward. We pray for the anointing and the blessing that is upon Apostle Chuck's ministry to also rest upon these yeah, and those that yeah. are watching right now. And we give you all the honor, the praise, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. And we declare that from today unto Purim, which is when Esther arose and Mordecai gained double honor. From today to Purim, get ready for your enemies to be executed and for an execution of indictments and justice and judgment. God is about to overturn and overthrow false words and decrees in the heavenly realms and on the earth. From today to Purim, let the Esthers arise and Mordecai gain double honor. Everybody, let's give it up for the Lord. Praise God. Come on, give us some hearts and lights. Please do share this on your wall. My goodness, this was a broadcast like none other. Amen. Prophet Leon, we love you, my friend. We love you, sir. Any last words uh, before we bring this to a I'm close? I'm easy. No, I'm good. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Ben, for having us on or making me a part of us. And this is a big blessing. Thank you so much, wow. everyone, for joining. My goodness. Everyone, let's give it up for the man of God, Prophet Leon Dupria. My goodness. And let's keep South Africa in prayer. I'm telling you, there's so much happening in the nations. But hear this. In the next 10 years, the eyes of the world are going to be on Africa and Asia, which, of course, includes the Middle East. But Africa, Asia, watch what God's going to do with Africa and Asia. Amen. Friends of God, before we close, I do want to make some announcements real quick. Of course, follow Apostle Chuck, follow Prophet Leon. I know Prophet Leon is on all social media handles. Amen. You could go ahead and follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, also, uh, coming up. Next week, I am going to be in Oklahoma. If you are in Tulsa or Oklahoma City, please join me. Jump in. I'm going to be ministering actually at ORU or Roberts University for a separate private event. But I'll also be in Oklahoma City and in Tulsa. So if you are in that region, come and see me. I would love to see you. Amen. Right after that, I'm in New Mexico with Prophet Charlie Shamp. And also with Steve Swanson, friends of God, we're coming back to the Navajo Nation, the First Nations. Join me, Prophet Charlie Shamp, 
uh, who's a great friend of ours, and also Steve Swanson. This is going to be Open Heavens, New Mexico. Going to be so powerful. You don't want to miss on this glory convergence. I'm telling you, friends, what the Lord's going to do in New Mexico is going to be baffling. A year and a half ago, I had a three-month revival there, three months straight. Miracle signs and wonders. So join us if you're in the Arizona, Colorado region. Drive and be a part of what God's going to do. Last but not least, we have an event in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Come on, all-inclusive food beachfront at the Westin Resort in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Do you need a vacation? Yes, you do. Come and join us. Myself, Apostle Stephanie Mines, Dr. Tadius Carter. Three days, Valentine's Day weekend, Puerto Vallarta, Mexico. Join us. Jump in the glory. It's still not too late for you to join and register. Valentine's Day weekend, whether you're single or whether you're married. This glory carries advance at the Westin Hotel Resort Spa. All-inclusive food, beachfront. Ocean Deluxe View is going to be a blessing to you. Amen. Also, friends, I have a webinar coming up soon. All of our Zoom webinars are for free. There, This one is called Breaking Soul Ties. I want to talk about breaking soul ties. How do soul ties get made in the first place? But let's start off this year with freedom and liberation. Join this free Zoom webinar with hundreds of others as we go into the topic and discussion and breaking soul ties. I believe this year you will start off more free than ever before. So go ahead and join us. All of our Zoom webinars are free and we enjoy seeing the hundreds of friends joining us for our Zoom webinars. And last but not least, I do have an online group mentorship, my goodness, called 7M Glory Equip. Everybody who's a part of our online group mentorship, they are world changers, leaders in their own right. These people who are part of this online group mentorship, my goodness, they're incredible. What can you expect by joining? We have at least two to three Zooms every month. And also, you get to join a private Telegram group, and you have greater and more direct access to me. I would love to mentor you and walk with you and pour into you. Start off this new year with greater mentorship, discipleship. I would love to walk with you in this season and help you to be equipped and excel to the next level. Join this group mem mentorship called 7M Glory Equip. Friends, God bless you. Love you. Make sure you give us a like and a follow. It's my great honor to be one of your favorite prophetic voices, myself and Prophet Leon. We love you. We honor you. Let's give it up for the man of God and also for God's general, Apostle Chuck Pierce. God bless you, friends. We'll see you soon.